Howdy folks, Craig Lavati here with the Houston Museum of Natural Science and the HMNS Beyond Bones podcast, now available on all of your favorite podcast apps. Today we're talking to Ruth and Sarah from the Adult Education Department about some very interesting excursions that we're offering up over the next year, including one, well, you, you may need to wear a hoodie. Do you have an extra hoodie I can borrow? Howdy folks, Craig Lovati here with the Houston Museum of Natural Science. This is the HMNS Beyond Bones podcast. Now on all of your favorite podcast apps, including Spotify, Audible, Google Podcasts, Spreaker, and Apple. I had to write all that down because I could not remember all of those. And I have seen us on Spotify. It is really cool. Uh, it's just it's nice to see us next to all of the other cool podcasts on Spotify that we won't talk about right now. Kat, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great down here in my basement, my cat cave. Have you got to listen to us on Spotify or Apple or anything like that? I haven't. I was just making a mental check because I had remembered that I, I absolutely need to because I pay for Spotify for my daughter. There you so go. I might as well use it. Yes, uh, search us, HMNS Beyond Bones Podcast. That's the quickest way. Obviously, if you're watching us on YouTube, keep doing that. But you can also listen to us while you're running or you're trying to be antisocial at the grocery store. I, I know a lot of people that wear headphones at the grocery store. It's weird. Uh, anyway, that's another uh, story for another podcast. Today's episode is, uh, well, they're all really cool. Today, we are joined by Ruth and Sarah from the Adult Education Department. They are uh, obviously working remotely, and we are talking today about all these amazing excursions that your department puts on, including two this year, one to Italy. They're traveling through the whole entire boot of Italy. They're also going up to the Black Hills dig site to look at dinosaurs and to dig in the dirt. And then you brave, brave people are taking a bunch of teenagers to Puerto Rico over the summer. Guys, Ruth and Sarah, how are you doing? Good. Ooh, that was in unison. Are you guys like one brain? They're like we one, are. two, three, go. There we go. <laughs> that sounded practiced almost. So guys, uh, first off, you're very brave for taking teenagers to Puerto Rico. Well, technically Marcy Stayer, the former eco team director and volunteer superstar is taking them. So we're just doing the logistics part. You're just going to be moral support back here in the chair. Yes, there absolutely. And so, Marcy's amazing. She's she one of those you could totally trust your children with a hundred percent. So yeah. Make sure the kids are well behaved, but I wanted to talk about the, the Italy tour. Uh, so, so Ruth, what does the Italy tour entail for, for adults? Well, Sarah can tell us all about oh, that. Oh, well, there we go. So the Italy tour is essentially um, a tour from north to south of Italy um, with a stop in Pompeii, which is going to be like our fun little thing. Um, so we'll start at the top and then we'll hit places like Venice and Rome and see all of the history and culture that's kind of in Italy. Um, including a little wine tour and a cooking class one night. Um, so it'll be super exciting and fun. And we'll end the entire thing um, in the South and spend a day just lounging around on the beach um, before we depart back to come back to the, the U.S. So I'm applying be, to be a helper on that one, Craig. Just, Did you know that? Just being a tourist, laying out, <laughs> hanging out, saying, hey, everybody, we're from Houston. The, when you go on these tours, does everybody make sure and remind everybody around the group that they are from Houston and from Texas? Oh, absolutely. We all wear our cowboy hats. Um, <laughs> it's a requirement. <laughs> um, but yeah, we try our best to um, not be the tourist type so we yeah so we want to branch out and mostly just go to um a lot of cool cathedrals we're going to see a lot of cool architecture um as well as vatican city which oh. is going to be interesting i'd say um it's a pretty cool place as well as the catacombs which is another fun thing so we're going to see a lot of kind of more obscure touristy places 
as well as kind of the main touristy places, as well as just lounging around and kind of experiencing the nitty gritty culture. Well, I, I think, think it'll be fun. It's interesting too. You guys are doing Pompeii because obviously last year we had, you know, record breaking Pompeii exhibit at HMS. And so if Pompeii being at HMS sort of spurred your interest in that, that way of life and that culture, then this tour is the tour for you. Absolutely. So there's a, let's see, there's, Venice, you said, I don't know, Italy, I don't, I've never looked at a map of Italy, I guess. Maybe yeah, that's so really it's, dumb right now. It's in its like little boot. So okay, it yeah. starts up here at Venice, okay. which is at the tippy top. So we'll do some sightseeing in Venice and then make our way down to Florence, which yeah. is down. And then we'll go to Rome, um, which is kind of where Vatican City is. So that's where we'll see that. Then we'll go to Sorrento. So Sorrento is the last part of it. And that's... Um, Kind of a less traveled kind of part of Italy. Like it's not the first place you would want to go, but it's definitely beautiful and it's definitely people overlook a lot. Um, so that's going to be where we end. And right between Rome and Sorrento is where Pompeii is. So that'll be a stop we make along the way to Sorrento. So it's going to be a bit, just a line down the boot of Italy. Can dogs come? Only hers. Your dog. Yeah, popped only, up, so. <laughs> only my dog. <laughs> No, unfortunately, I don't think we have accommodations for that. Uh, Maybe that's an idea. Travel with your dog series of adult adventures. If you really wanted it, you could put your like three dogs in a trench coat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could stand on each other's shoulders. It's just my very hairy uncle. My very hairy uncle has always wanted to see Italy. Uh, exactly. Do, you, do people get to sort of, do you have to stay with the group the entire time or can people venture off or do you kind of have to keep all the ducks together? Um, so we kind of stay together on the group excursions, but there's totally enough free time throughout um, where you get like a free day or a free afternoon where you can go by yourself and do your own thing. Um, all the excursions that we go, we have are going to be something you can go on and we recommend you go on. But if you don't want to do them, you can go lounge around or um, explore Italy yourself. Um, The only thing we require is that we travel together because we're like on a bus. But other than that, it's kind of a lot of free time where if you wanted to explore a certain thing, you totally could. Now, this is one of the first tours we've we've gone on uh, since since I guess the pandemic started, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, this will be the second. Yeah, we did an Egypt trip just a little while ago, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And who which who went on the Egypt trip? It was awesome. I want to go down the Egypt trip. It was awesome. I have like a bajillion pictures that I'm like, one day I'll load them. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was awesome. In Italy, if, if I'm not mistaken, that's where history comes from, correct? That's where a lot of history comes from. So like Rome is probably the biggest history nerd um, kind of place. So like every everybody knows about Rome because that's like where a lot of history has come from. It's where a lot of um, religious history has come from. Um, And we'll be seeing a little bit of that with the cathedrals, the catacombs, Mm -hmm. Vatican City. Um, So it's a lot of history and it's a lot of preserved history. So not only is it um just history that you could say hey look at this rubble it's more like history where you can see the things as they maybe not as they were obviously but um kind of in a state where you can imagine how it might have been um so not just ruins but some ruins maybe but a lot of old cities definitely they're in Vatican City is amazing because it's a totally separate it's its own entity it's not Italy it is its own city state country yeah um, so that, yeah, it's a that sovereign it state mm-hmm. it's a sovereign state which i think is just amazing they have their own you know structure everything on their own a banking system i think yeah you know, and you have to like um you have to book to go inside because they they don't just let people walk in it's not something mm-hmm. you can just decide to go to um, they have like rules and stuff that you have to follow because it is its own sovereign entity that differ from just Italy itself. So it's pretty interesting. Is it a separate visa or is it just a booking? An issue I don't think it? it's a separate visa. I think a lot of the bookings just so that there's not like 
a bunch of people in Bottlenecks it. Bottlenecks or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah. And because once again, there's a lot of things to be aware of whenever you go in there, because it's mm-hmm. not just your, your normal run of the mill city. Um, it's its own kind of separate little thing and they have their own little practices doing and things. stuff. Yeah. So. That makes sense. Now, do you have to call ahead to get like a meet and greet autograph session with the Pope, or <laughs> is that is that a is that a is that an option on this tour? I don't think so. But <laughs> if it was, we would be first in line for that. <laughs> it reminds me, what's the Jack? There's a Jack Black movie, uh, God, the Poker King, where there's a whole scenario on there where he, has, he gets everybody a mean greet with the poets. That was, that, that was what it, that was a reference to. So the Italy tour sounds really cool. And that's in September, correct? Yes, okay. it is September um, 24th to October 2nd. Wow. And that's going to be, uh, that obviously entails a lot of walking. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're like, that sounds amazing start walking now right sort of get, your get your new your, shoes and break them in start breaking in those hiking boots because it's going to be a lot of walking it's not like houston where you can just drive everywhere there's a lot of walking so it's good for you there you go the stairs there's a lot Lots of, stairs. of stairs there's a lot of stairs a lot of stairs so one of the know. little towns that they're going to go to is called sam Gimignano, which is one of the oldest medieval towns still in Italy that's right outside of Florence. And you can actually still climb up some of the towers and then see the whole landscape. And there's lots of stairs. It was like 400 plus stairs. That's a lot of stairs. So it's so, like a, your Fitbit will just like, like melt off your arm. Oh, Start yeah. Rice just, and doing the bleachers. Yeah. Run the bleachers yeah. before you go. Yeah. Now, now tell us about this dinosaur dig. I kind of like, I, I buried the lead on that. I, I'm excited about learning about this. So Dino Dig, the last time we went was 2017. So it's similar to the trip that we did, only we expanded it. So before we had, I think it was four dig days. Now we have six full dig days. We've added a, we confirmed this morning, the adventure cave caving tour on our way from Rapid City to Hewlett. Um, we've added that. We've added the mammoth site. We'll still go to Homestake Mine and, and um, the Crazy Horse Memorial and Mount Rushmore. Um, and then we also added previously what it was, was a half day at Devil's Tower, but we've made that a full day just because there's the hikes are really cool and there's really more to see than just a half day. So it's an expanded trip than what it was in 2017. So I have a question about the dig. Sorry, Craig, I didn't mean to talk over oh, you. Oh, no, no, no. It's probably the same question I had. Uh, what is the, what does a dig day look like there? I know I've been on uh, digs with the museum as I think probably Craig has too, uh, not dinosaur, but more prehistoric, older. The Metrodons. The Metrodons and uh, Xenocants and all that kind of stuff. What does a dig day look like on this kind of trip? Do they get down in the dirt? Is it similar? Yeah, so where the quarry is, so it's a private quarry. What you actually do is you have to go up this hill to get to it. And then once you're actually there, you just kind of find a spot. They'll, they'll in the beginning, they'll brief you on how to do things correctly. Mm -hmm. And then you'll just kind of find a spot and then just either start like with the bayonet really chipping away large chunks of dirt or like if there's something like the last time we were there in 2017, they had already uncovered part of a scapula. So Mm -hmm. they put some people like the people that really love like real fine detail work. um, They put them there and you're just there with an exacto knife, like real carefully scraping a dental. And you just dig, you just dig the whole day. You dig, 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 and then break for lunch and then dig, dig, dig some more. And usually at the very end of the um, trip, like the last day, there will be some kind of celebration with the BHI crew. And, you know, you know, that recent Dwayne, the rock Johnson, the whole thing about him, you know, whether he owned this T-Rex or not, well, that he doesn't, it's just the replica that BHI that he was talking about was their crew. Like these are the people oh. he was talking about that he worked with to get that replica. That is cool. So, what kind of yeah, dinosaurs, yeah. or at least last time, what kind of dinosaur were they working on? And I asked you. I don't question. remember. I'm sorry. James, <laughs> James would remember. I don't remember. I remember the scapula was like huge. Enormous. Like it was, yeah. And it was so, just one little, one little chunk of it. That's so they so put cool. you to work. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. You get nice and dirty, but the, <laughs> so, the, there's no, there's no chance. It's really nice. Uh, you don't really, there's nothing really there to go see. It's not like you're going to go, there's yeah. nothing else to do, but to dig. Dig. It's okay. really satisfying. Yeah, so, I don't know if you liked it, Craig, but I, I find digging really, really satisfying. It was, uh, I didn't get to dig much. Um, I kind of just followed around Dr. Bacher and just had the had the camera on him the whole time, just waiting for gold to come out of his mouth. He likes that. So, so that was pretty much all I did. But it was it was a, it was, you know, it, we had a high school group with us from near the museum and they really enjoyed it. They were really, you know, intense. Oh, the post oak kids. Yeah, they were really oh, cool. excited about it. And it is one of the and you are right. It is very it's it's satisfying. And it's also because, you know, I think the day we were there, we ended up uncovering some small minuscule part of a bone or something from a fossilized bone from, uh, I believe it would have been Demetrodon. And just, you know, to think that that was like hundreds of millions of years oh, ago, that was a special mind. part. That was a special part of it too. And I'm sure at Black Hills, you're, you know, there's a chance you could uncover, you know, just untold amazing things. Yeah. Definitely. And I took so, my Jeep to there and I still have red dirt on it from like, I don't know, the eight years ago, I actually took my Jeep with me. I can't, I can't get rid of it. You drove it up to the Black Hills? I, I no, no, I'm sorry. I was still talking about Seymour. Seymour, okay. And we yeah. should talk about the Black Hills. Yeah, Seymour, definitely. Yeah, I still had red dirt on my truck after that for quite some time. And I, I wore it proudly. I didn't even want to go wash the truck. I was like, no, that's red dirt from Demetrodon land. So I kept that on there. When is the Black Hills tour? That is July 21st through the 30th. So that's coming up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so it definitely cooler like, there than it is here. Oh in yeah. July. It's if you're, if you are in Houston, it is nothing like Houston. Like it's hot, but it's your, the altitude is much higher mm -hmm. and it's dry. So it's I mean, you might sweat heat. a little bit, but it actually evaporates. So mm -hmm. it's really comfortable, like really, really comfortable. So you're There's flying, no shade, we fly from Houston to rapid city to rapid city. And then from there, we move drive on. up to the Black Hills. Yes. Yeah. Because from Rapid City, we'll take a charter bus and then in between Rapid City and Hewlett, that's where we'll go to, I want to say it's Black Hills Caverns, the Black Hills Institute. We'll have lunch at this really cute little town. Um, the restaurant's called the Alpine. It's like old style German food. It's so oh, good yeah. and it's so cute. It's then out Rushmore. The Helen Steak Mine, which is now where they do, I think it's like particle physics, which mm -hmm. is it's really cool. And then we end up in Hewlett, dig, dig, dig for three days. Then there's a day in between at Devil's Tower where you can just hike all the trails, see all these really cute, really chunky, just chunky little prairie dogs. And <laughs> they're so cute because they're just like they're they're like little area and they'll just pop up kind of like that Chuck E. Cheese game. Like a whack-a-mole um, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, at night, I don't, you know, I, I don't know if they're still doing that now, but they used to at night do like this laser light show about devil's power and what it represents to the indigenous people and mm -hmm. how it's revered as a sacred monument. And then you go back for three more days and dig, dig, dig. And then on your way back to Rapid City, um, they'll be stopping at the Crazy Horse Memorial and the Mammoth site. Ooh. So lots of dinosaurs, lots of history, lots of geology, deep and history. That's, and that's also, that's for uh, ages. They try to go 15 and up on that one. Cause there is, yes. you know, there, you don't want to have little, little, little stragglers, you know, bothering. Around exacto the, knives. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I can tell you from experience that younger children do better with exacto knives than big kids and adults. I was going to say, that's yeah, true. you could probably just give a kid like a pair of chopsticks and say, Hey, go get to work over there. And uh, I'm going to come <laughs> back five days. Here's a bag of sandwiches. Yeah. Be fine. <laughs> a loaf of bread. Yeah, a loaf it's of bread. Water. Yeah, that'll be fine. Uh that's really cool. And and that's that's also one of those things that a lot of all these excursions that we go on, they connect. It's sort of the connective tissue between what we do at the museum. Um, you know, and so obviously Black Hills, there, we have some specimens here at HMS that come from Black Hills. Obviously, Pompeii, Italy, that's connected back to the museum. And speaking of teenagers, that also brings us up to this uh, excursion for this summer to Puerto Rico with just a big plane full of teenagers from Houston, right? Absolutely. Yep. Um, so we're doing a teen trip because we typically haven't done that in the past to Puerto Rico um, and we're making it for teens so that they can kind of go out and experience a little bit of the outside world without going outside of the U.S. 
is it 13 to 18 the age range or is it a little older 12 to 18 so that 18. um yeah so that there's a chance for um all the all the teens to um kind of experience a little bit of a little bit of puerto rico culture and kind of explore around a independent a little safe independence where you can go on a trip without mom and dad and maybe explore with like-minded teens um, in a safe environment. Exactly, exactly. You have a much more positive view of teenagers, Kat. Because I have, love teenagers. I, I really, I, 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 I really I, do. At my age, I'm just like mortified. Like I'm like, oh god, they're gonna make fun of me and yell at me. They're gonna be doing TikToks. They smell all over. your fear. <laughs> they they, smell your they fear. really do. They really do smell the fear. <laughs> they uh, do. They know what you can handle. And, I, and I've been to Puerto Rico, and it's it's a beautiful, beautiful beautiful land over there and there's so so much different vegetation and i i, I want to say this too puerto rico offers up so many different experiences as well definitely it's got a rich absolutely so yeah very much it's um it's got a kind of amazing bit of natural and then like natural exploration and then you can also explore kind of culturally what's going on and their culture differs from the united states kind of cultures so much um even though it's still technically part of uh, u.s territory because you have the rainforest aspect over there on the northeast end of the island which is really beautiful i loved exploring all that stuff i think uh we even got lost inside the rainforest at one point and we had to like no walk five, you didn't we had to walk crumbs? five miles back to our little rented chevy aveo and oh, that wow. was just like that was home it was great i we went to fajardo uh went offshore a little bit and then i enjoyed going to san juan uh san juan was really cool obviously san juan has a lot of a big a rich literary um mm -hmm. history there hunter s thompson used to live there i believe and did Hunter S. Thompson things in San Juan. It's a very interesting, interesting land. I, I've heard a lot of people say that it reminds them of Cuba or, or, or Florida that has that sort of that same, that same vibe. I would tell parents we won't be doing any Hunter S. Thompson type things yeah. <laughs> with teenagers. That, that, we, they have to be a little bit older for that. I think we went, on the, we went on the Bacardi tour. I don't think that's a thing for teenagers yeah. 12 to 18. Yeah, so. not, not quite. <laughs> That's so, right. When you were there, did you see some part of it that I thought was really cool? Is that they're going to see the bioluminescent bay? Yes, we did that. that. Yes, like, yes. I'm like, that sounds that. so cool. Yeah, we did that, and um, not to give too much away, but yes, that um, the bioluminescent uh, bay is definitely a good um, uh, team building exercise. I'll say that much. So yes, that was very interesting. Spoiler I, alert. I only fell out of the water once, but I'll, luckily it was like very, it was very shallow. It wasn't and that it bad. But, but yeah, but even at, yeah, I was just like swamp thing. Oh, no, cool. it, it's a very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. So, um, and then, like I said, Puerto Rico, it's, it's part of the U S uh, you don't need a passport to go there, you know, just, you know, obviously respect their culture. Uh, brush up on Spanish before you go. I'll say that much. I had a few interesting run-ins at the Burger King over there. Um, I felt really, I felt really accomplished to order in Spanish at Burger King in Puerto Rico. So did you practice a little bit. Yeah, I did some Duolingo before we got there. Yeah, and instead of just pointing, <laughs> instead of just pointing and going, mm, that looks good. Uh, and then also there's the um, the, the uh, they have food stalls on the side of the road too that are really cool. Uh, I I loved those so much of um like bowls of mufungo I believe it's really good uh, I probably bobbled that word it's been eight years since I've been there but yes sounds that. like it might be a mushroom <laughs> no it was really good it was really good it's kind of like a like a meat and rice bowl Ooh, yeah. yeah there we go so uh, any tours coming up for 2023 or am I thinking way too far ahead well let's so nothing. Yeah, nothing set in stone or official yet, but we are. Um, I don't know if Ruth, Ruth, should we tell him yes. the perspective? Right yeah, so um, we are kind of seeing about going to Antarctica. I was joking. Yeah. No, I, no. Wow. Yeah, okay. We're for real. <laughs> like, okay. Early, like I was joking. I, yeah, yeah we're, we're like, who told you, Chris? No, no, no. I was joking. No. That's funny. Okay. So, Have Antarctica. You in our air 
No, I Antarctica. have not. Antarctica. Yeah, absolutely. The least like you wouldn't you wouldn't think that you would want to go there, but I he's hooking his six cents along with his Spanish. I want to go to Antarctica really bad. Join us. So okay. Antarctica. How do you have to do that? so that's that would go obviously you have to go South America, correct? And then you hop yeah. down there and then okay. Yeah, so it's a cruise yeah, so trip. So you would fly down, and then from there, I want to say the takeoff point. The lower half, I'm assuming, over there. Yes, whatever the okay. lowest major Airport. international Airport. city. Airport. Yeah, so you would fly right. there. And that's where, and the um, one of the companies that we're looking at is Hurtigruten, which did our Norway tour as well. Mm -hmm. So they also do like a whole tour, and then depending on, when we would go, they include like different, there's like the regular tour and then they could include more. So you could see maybe some penguins. So penguins. Antarctica, so it's a, it's a, um, if you guys do that tour, obviously, um, you know, pandemic pending, um, that would be one of those things where it's a cruise. It's not like you wouldn't just like, you wouldn't drop you off on the continent of Antarctica and give with you a backpack. A, go ahead, have a good Bye. time. See you back. See you back at sundown. It's our so, survivor yeah. series of travel. But you know what? That's a cool thing is that I know that you know we've always said at the museum with all these excursions that eventually we want to go to every single continent mm -hmm. on the planet. And yeah. Antarctica is a continent, but it's also one of those ones that very few people ever think about actually marking off their list. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the plan is that within seven years, we'll have visited all seven continents. And then we'll just keep cycling because each continent has so much stuff to look at. So we'll never run out of things to do. I cannot imagine Antarctica. That sounds really, that's fascinating. Yeah. Are you counting it, Eurasia as one continent or are you counting them separately? Separate. Okay. Separate. And then Texas, obviously, is a whole it's its own continent. sort of other thing. You know, last week uh, we had uh, Dr. Carolyn Summers on and she blew our minds when she basically said that the moon is a continent or it's what did she say? The moon yeah. is basically it's mm -hmm. like a, a it's, it's like a, the eighth continent. Yeah, that was so. That's cool. It's a bunch of crust maybe. torn off of the planet and thrown up into space in the Earth's uh, orbit. Huh. That does make sense. I never That's thought about that. Cool. Yeah. So maybe what in 14 years we'll all come right. back and we'll go to the moon. I'll skip that. Yeah, one. that one's pending. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. I can't it's even be a imagine. Penny. I can't even imagine how much that would that would cost. I'd have to really suck up to a lot of people and be like, please, yeah. please, please. I'm a really nice. <laughs> Send nice Craig guy. to the moon. Send me to the moon. <laughs> uh, you definitely would need a passport for that. I would say that much too. Planetary passport. Planetary passport. Oh, well, no, it'd be off planetary passport. Interplanetary. 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 Wait, no, because it's not a planet. No. Either way, it's a continent. <laughs> it's a continent. Yeah, there we go. Well, you, who knows? In 14 years, we may be like. Inter extra continental passport. I wouldn't be. Yeah, I mean, and who knows in 14 years what we've, what horrible things we've done to the moon. So, uh, you know, knock on wood, knock don't on. Be negative. I don't know. Who knows? You know, the, you know. Starbucks on the moon, Walmart on the moon. Who knows? I'm ready for that. Uh, so how do people find out about all these excursions? How do they sign up for these? <clears throat> the quickest way is to go to hnms.org slash travel. Travel. And that will have the two adult trips. So the Dino Dig and the um, Italy trip. And then for the teens, let me see if this short link works. Yeah, hmns.org slash teen. All right, cool. And then for and, the teens, it's you'll just scroll down, and then their um, travel to Puerto Rico is in there. And keep your eyeballs open because I think we have more teen stuff just in general uh, yes. going on and playing. Yeah, for there's the future, all kinds which I think of, is cool. Yeah, we're trying to reach out to the kids. We want the kids to be excited right. about the music. Hello, fellow kids. It's you know, like how I use that that I use that little. <laughs> I was thing like, the other is that day. a toy behind you, Craig? What I have? Oh tons no, of toys. I know you that's do. That's a garbage box. can. That's a oh, garbage can. Oh, it has stickers oh, on it. I was that's like, a I know the money. Can. No, I put stickers on everything, so that's a that's a garbage can. So <laughs> of course it is. There you go. Oh, it's a like, fancy garbage. Order from Spec. I a see garbage. a Spec sticker. <laughs> yes, that's, yeah. that's the one that catches my attention. Meat and cheese. I only get meat and cheese there. There's nothing else there for me. There's only there's nothing else there for me in these you days. You can give so me wine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we were nothing else there at all. 
There you go. Any meats and cheese. So, guys, thank you very much, Ruth and Sarah, for jumping on here with us and explaining about all these ex- amazing excursions. Uh, I, I, I got it to the Antarctica one. I have to say, I, I'm going to save up my pennies for that one. That sounds really cool. We could oh. even do the podcast from there. I could. What? How many is it? What's the time zone down there? Like they have their own time zone, I'm assuming, right? I'm sure they probably, yeah, I'm sure they probably <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we'll probably have to record the podcast for you guys here in Houston at like. Get cat know, up in the middle three, of the night. Three o'clock in the morning and I'll be bright eyed and bushy tailed and I'll have like, you know, like snow and ice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll have, penguin. A penguin in my arm. I'll have a penguin in my arm and I'll have <laughs> snow and ice all in my beard. I'll be like, oh, howdy folks. Craig was out of here at the. He's already really fantasizing good. about his trip. Yeah, I am. I am. That is going to be exciting. And it's a really cool way to, it bolsters the community we have uh, around the museum as well. And, you know, patrons, you know, they get to meet each other and, you know, it creates a cool little ecosystem of people there. And, you know, maybe, you know, see somebody that, you know, you, you, you bunked up with in Italy, you know, while you're hanging out in mm-hmm. the same hall and go, hey, that person snores. So there you go. <laughs> How would you know? Exactly. <laughs> guys, thank you very much for jumping in on uh jumping in on this with us. Thanks, and guys. Uh, we're gonna throw up the links at the bottom over here on uh YouTube and uh we will post the links later on too. But just go to the website, let your fingers do the walking, and uh go on an excursion with HMS. Yes. Thanks for having us. Bye.